Welcome back. You might remember last week we told you about the Disinformation Dozen. They are a group of 12 people set to be responsible for sharing 65% of all anti-vaccine messaging that is happening on social media. And the number one person on that list is a doctor who started his business in Chicago. And the group that came up with that list is the nonprofit known as the Center for Countering Digital Hate. Joining us now is Imran Ahmed with the Center for Countering Digital Hate. Good morning to you, Imran. So appreciate you joining me this morning. Um, tell me how your group came up with this list and why. Well, look, we've been looking at the threat posed by anti-vaccine misinformation for some years now. But at the start of COVID, it became clear that, that, was, that they were gearing up for the opportunity provided by COVID. They saw it as a great opportunity, this pandemic that's ravaged the planet and they saw an opportunity to grow their markets they knew that people would be anxious that they could spread misinformation in that environment we're most prone to misinformation and conspiracy when we're anxious not just about what's true or what's not but where to get information so a new virus a pandemic that hadn't been seen before that was a prime opportunity for them and we wanted to look at well what what proportion of the extremely sophisticated propaganda that we were seeing and it is sophisticated it's clever it's devious it's very sly because what it tries to do is inject doubt into what for a long time has been settled science that vaccines are you know in the last 200 years the safest most consequential most effective therapy that medicines developed and what we found was that 12 individuals were producing two thirds of the misinformation. Now, look, I admit I'm a, I'm a fan of old war movies, so disinformation dozen because of its echo to the dirty dozen was particularly attractive. But actually, I mean, more generally speaking, we find this to be true across a number of different types of problem, problem areas in social media. A tiny number of people produce the vast amount of the problem. And our argument to social media companies, one that they've sort of accepted but haven't acted on, is that we could clean up these environments, stop the misinformation from infecting uh, the, the entire sort of population. Okay. If we could, if we could basically say for these people, close their close their accounts, wow. just like okay. you say you will. Okay, let's talk about these people then, because number one on your list is a former Chicago doctor, Dr. Joseph Mercola. Tell us why he's considered number one out of the 12 that you say are the vast majority that are spreading this disinformation. Well, look, look by his own claim, he's made a pretty penny over many years from uh, spreading, well, sort of essentially selling snake oil. Uh, an old-fashioned snake oil salesman. He claims to be worth $100 million. And let me give you one example of a therapy that he recommended. So he says that for acute COVID, don't worry about medicine, conventional medicine. Why don't you try something that's that nebulized hydrogen peroxide? So this is something he's pushed on his websites, in his book. And nebulized hydrogen peroxide sounds fantastically medical, doesn't it? Nebulized means inhaled through a mask. Hydrogen peroxide is bleach. It doesn't sound that scientific anymore, does it? And I'm afraid that the, this is the sort of nonsense that we've seen pumped out by people like Dr. McCola over many years, but in particular in the past year, that seeks to make people stop trusting medicine, vaccines, tells them that COVID isn't that dangerous after all, and says that if you do get it, don't worry, I've got a solution for you. Of course, it's all nonsense, but it's dangerous nonsense. And we can see the effects in the United States where so many people are reluctant to take vaccines because of the misinformation that's being pumped to them. Right, you know what? You have some other names on this list, and well, let's get that list up here right now. And uh, one of them is another familiar name to people, and that is told Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Um, what do you feel that he has done? Well, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, in particular has targeted the African-American community with misinformation, a community that has already been hit hard by the ravages of COVID. It has had a disproportionate uh, morbidity. So uh, uh, more uh, African-Americans have been ill and more have died as a proportion um, in, this, in this pandemic. What he's saying to them is, and he's literally said, African blood is different to white blood. Black boys have more reactions to vaccines than white boys. That's why black boys, in his view, should not be vaccinated. Black people should be more reluctant about vaccination. Now, of course, he's building off the name of his father, who was a great civil rights uh, ally. And 
it is it is so troubling to see this man who leverages uses the name that the, the benefits of the name given to him by his family who of course has been disowned by m many members of, of his family on this particular issue of vaccines unfortunately to target the african-american community with misinformation that simply compounds the harm that's been done to them yeah imran i'm curious what are you hoping is going to happen as a result of this list that you have cre created and what are you hoping you can do to enforce that the people who are allowing this stuff to appear on social media uh, do about this well, look, it, it, this report came out in March. Back in March, 12 attorneys general from different states, uh, four members of the House Energy and Commerce Committee asked Mark Zuckerberg about it personally when he was giving testimony there. Senators have written to him. Now the president's spoken up. We've seen an enormous amount of moral pressure being put on the companies to do their jobs, to do what all of us have done, which is to do our bit in the middle of this pandemic where we, you know, to, to, to the limits of, of, our, of our own powers. They have not done so. And I think this shows the limitation of moral pressure. There's two factors here. First of all, there's no regulation at the moment that forces social media companies to abide by their own rules, rules which they are in the unique privilege of setting for themselves. The second thing is that these companies, there is no competition. So even if you said, you know what, I'm disgusted by Instagram's behavior, where do you go? There, are, there is no competition in this incredibly concentrated market. And so that's why we need antitrust legislation to break up these large monopolies. It's simply unacceptable that a few small San Francisco-based executives get to decide whether or not millions of Americans consume misinformation. Worse well, than that, in a pandemic, whether or not millions of uh, Americans consume misinformation, that might kill them. Imran Ahmed, thank you so much. Fascinating discussion this morning. And uh, if uh, anybody would like to learn more information, uh, what do you suggest? What's the website people can go to? Counterhate.com has all of our reports on there. They're fully uh, available to any member of the public. Thank you again for your time. Appreciate My it. My pleasure.